Hi, we're in the carpenter shop at Historic Richmond Town. Uh, what we're working on today are limber jacks. Uh, a limber jack was and still is a form of entertainment uh, where someone takes a little figure like this as an articulated finger. His legs move, his arms move. He's on the end of a stick and what we do is sit on something with the stick held in place by us sitting on it. So it's just a thin slat. And the limber jack, uh, this would be better if there was music playing, he just stands there and if we start to tap the stick, he starts to dance. And it tends to make the person doing it look very clever, but it's really a simple machine that uh, the cleverness is in there before you even start doing this. You can also have him going up and down and do like all sorts of gyrations. This was a kind of a party piece uh, probably 18th century, maybe even before, uh, and probably comes from Europe uh, to America. Uh, it was a popular thing. A lot of people made their own. Uh, there were commercial people making them too. Uh, to make this figure, there's a lot of parts. There's the body, there's the arms, there's the legs. Of course, your legs have, you have thighs, you have a calf, legs in two pieces. Uh, putting them together and making the shapes is very labor intensive because there's all these little facets and there's slots and there's a tenon that goes into a mortise and there's holes and there's the shape of the body itself. So it takes, uh, for a little thing like that, actually takes quite a bit of work. What I'm doing right now over here is um, in the midst of this one, the leg is already on this, uh, attached here to the body. Uh, this leg, I have to drill a hole for the nail to fit through. There are nails holding these joints together. And I have to make that nail, I have to make that hole slightly larger. I'm gonna, as I drill the hole, also wobble the drill around, wiggle it around slightly. Because this has to be a clearance hole, meaning the nail that fits in here, it has to be able to pivot on that nail, not stick tightly to it. So the idea now, we have to, we've already drilled the nail in the, the hip area, so to speak, and we're going to line these up. We want his legs to be the same length so that they'll both touch the, the board that he's going to dance on. So we'll kind of line the two legs up, put the nail in place through the hole. We can find where the hole is. Okay, and then I'm going to push the nail in to make a little mark so I know where to drill my hole. We'll put it in the vise. And we'll drill our hole through here. And now, put them in place and put the nail through. Now uh, there's a pilot hole through here. There's no hole in this part, so we're going to drive the nail into there, and that's what's going to hold the nail in place. So now he's got his two legs on, and it's funny how there's a lot of uh, impressionable uh, impressions in this. His feet are simply made, in this case, by making a little cut with a chisel and then shaving up to that cut. So it kind of gives the impression of feet. And we do the same thing with his arms. Here's his shoulder and here's his arm. It's just the impression of something there on the end of his arm. Uh, it's a, in that case, it does seem like a toy because toys are for children and children have better imaginations than the rest of us. They can uh, say, well, that, that's a hand. Uh, even though it doesn't technically have fingers, that's a child's imagination that's taken over. But these were uh, common uh, things in homes. As I say, uh, the, the question of whether it's a toy or something just for amusement for everyone, uh, I think is still open to question because when people come in this shop and I try these out for them, and many of them have never seen it before, the adults smile just as much as the children, perhaps even more. So thanks for coming. Uh, Come again to Richmond Town when you can.